Hi, my name is Nadina Sanachar. I'm from Brampton, Ontario, and I'm entering in elementary speech arts. Never Enough by Lorianne Davis and Christine Kolnick. Everyone always says I'm too young to have this problem. My parents were in complete denial. They kept sending me to doctors insisting that I had some unknown disease that was causing me to lose weight. And what they didn't understand, what I did, I do have a disease. And it's called anorexia. I'm not exactly quite sure when it started. I just remember feeling fat my whole life. Everyone always looked at me as the funny chubby one and my sister the pretty one. I was fat and she was thin, and that was always made known to me. I remember one year for Christmas, when I was eight and she was 10, my parents got my sister ballet lessons, and me, cooking lessons. I was devastated and completely jealous. I just wish that for once, everyone would look at me as this beautiful ballerina with the perfectly skinny body. And then suddenly before I knew it, I got my wish. I became that ballerina. I became obsessed. I ate practically nothing and would throw away food and my parents weren't looking. That was all I thought about. Every morning when I woke up, the first thing I would do was weigh myself and after each pound was lost, all I wanted to do was lose another. Lots of hard work. I'm slowly getting better. Slowly trying to be happy and healthy again. Slowly being able to have dreams beyond that damn ballerina. The pig by Roald Dahl. In England once there lived a big and wonderfully clever pig. To everyone, it was plain that Piggy had a massive brain. He worked out songs inside his head. There was no book he hadn't read. He knew what made an airplane fly. He knew how engines worked in life. He knew all of this, but in the end, one question drove him round the bend. He simply couldn't puddle out what life was really all about. What was the reason for his birth? Why was he placed upon this earth? His giant brain went round and round. Alas, no answer could be found. 
till suddenly, one wondrous night, all in a flash, he saw the light. He jumped up like a ballet dancer and screamed, I've got, I've got the answer. They want my bacon, slice by slice, to sell at a tremendous price. They want my pork to make a rose, and that's the part that'll cost the most. They want my juicy tender chops to put in all the butcher shops. They want my saucers and strings. They even want my chitterlings. <laughs> the butcher's shop? The carving knife? not designed to give a pig great peace of mind. The next morning, in comes Farmer Bland with a pail of pigs oil in his hand. And Piggy, with a mighty roar, bashes the farmer to the floor. Now, here comes the rather grisly bit, so let's not make too much of it. Except that you must understand Piggy did eat Farmer Bland. He ate him up from head to toe, chewing the pieces nice and slow. And Pig, of course, was absolutely no remorse. He slowly scratched his brainy head, and with a little smile, he said, I had a fairly powerful hunch that he was going to have me for his lunch. So, because I feared the worst, I thought I might just have to eat him first. A Rose and Its Thorns, written by Nadina Sanachar in the Summer Side. When you think of a flower, what comes to mind? Daisies, tulips, daffodils, roses, sweetness, rich in color, blooming and full of life. Growth. Of all those flowers are beautiful, however, one of them stands out the most. The rose. When you look at a rose, Beautiful flower, rich in color. However, there are thorns all over the stem. All over the stem until you reach the flower itself. That's quite similar to people, if you ask me. Think about it. Some have been hurt by so many that they put up a guard that prevents people from coming in. They choose not to open up to anyone because they're afraid of being picked apart to their root of growth, their vulnerability. Just like roses, humans are afraid of their flowers and their petals being picked off one by one, slowly withering away. And some may think that those with their guard up are strong and intimidating, Ultimately, are we all not just flowers afraid of fully blooming? Inside of everyone, there's a small, fragile flower protecting itself from the world beyond the comfortable. If only we could learn how to see the beauty in everyone's soul.